Uh, again, welcome, and I hope like uh, all of you are doing okay uh, in these times. And um, so, uh, thanks to our side was City, and uh, today we are going to be talking. The, uh, this presentation is about uh, sketching. So I'm an architect. Uh, my name is Chucho Loria, um, and I uh, I like to sketch a lot, and I use uh, sketch. Uh, on a daily basis, uh, and I wanted to start this slide, the presentation with this slide about uh, uh, this is the sketchbook, and this is the, the, the stereotypical, you know, like this image of the of the architect with the sketchbook, like the, uh, but it's it's true. We do <laughs> we do that. So that this is my sketchbook, and uh, so with that with that being said, um, so the first thing that I would like to start is. Um, one of the first things is like I you said, uh, this uh, presentation is about the sketch, but it's in terms about the architectural sketch. Yes, that um, is not intended to be uh, um, like a, a finished, uh, 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 you know, not to achieve a finished uh, art per se, it's uh, as used as part of the process in the design process uh, as we use it in architecture. And, um, so, okay, I this, so that's me. So, uh, my name is Jesus Antonio Loria Quijano, but I go by Chucho Loria. So I think like that's, that's uh, a lot easier. And that's a picture of myself. Uh, so um, I'm originally from Mexico. I'm um, all my architectural training. I, I did my architect architectural training there in Mexico. And, uh, but I'm licensed, uh, I have been living in the US for uh, 16 years and I'm licensed to practice architecture here. Um, and I have been working uh, uh, for the last years I worked in the, I previously worked at, or eight years I worked at uh, New Orleans Architects uh, here in Iowa City. And uh, so I have worked in several projects in town. Uh, one of the projects I have been fortunate uh, to be part of, or one of them is uh, the School of Music, uh, the College of Public Health, the uh, North End Zone addition to the Kinnick Stadium, uh, among a uh, few other projects that I've been uh, been part, been able to be part of, uh, being being able to be part of as part of as an architect. Um, I feel very fortunate for 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 that. And especially because they are in Iowa City, and, and Iowa City is is such a great place. My wife, my kids, uh, we it's a community that we love, and uh, so that is very meaningful to, uh, to me. Those projects, just to be able to participate in those projects in this uh, community, um, that is honestly uh, quite a fantastic uh, uh, place. So, Daniel, my wife, uh, she's from uh, Winterset, Iowa. And uh, we met in Mexico, and uh, we have been uh, married. Uh, it's going to be 20 years this uh, uh, December, and uh, we have two boys. Uh, Sebastian, uh, he's uh, 17 years old, and he's going to be a senior uh, this fall at, at City High. And Diego, uh, he's 14, and he's going to be a freshman uh, at City High. Uh, yeah, my wife is, uh, teaches uh, Spanish at uh, City High, so I think that's about me. So this is the content that we're, what we're going to be what we are going to be talking about uh, now. Um, we have the camera right here. So uh, if I'm looking, please don't don't take it. I'm not talking to you. Uh, I'm not very uh, used to this kind of format, but I, I need to be looking at some other things. But I'm I'm with you. So please uh, uh, no, don't take that that I'm not uh, I'm, that I'm trying to connect. And uh, so the content is uh, we're going to be talking about uh, we're going to be briefly talk about type of architectural drawings that I uh, just to just to kind of understand what is that uh, where that uh, the sketching uh, part of uh, the sketching fills falls with, within the architectural drawings what the sketching is about we're going to be uh, just have like a, some uh, some uh, uh, brief history of uh, sketching it's not trying to uh, it's not going to be a, a history but I feel like there is there are some elements in the in the history of uh, uh, sketching 
that uh, is, I, I find that quite fascinating. And we're going to be looking at uh, uh, the sketching uh, samples by uh, some architects and how they have used them. And some uh, sketching samples of my, uh, of my work and some uh, related to my work and other uh, sketching samples that I have done, not directly for, directly for my work, but it still help me to practice and to keep polishing my, my, uh, my skills, uh, trying to be, uh, continue uh, learning type of architectural drawing. So, um, so we have here, like a, uh, we're showing here like, uh, uh, sketches and how we use uh, uh, sketches. So that, that one on the top, uh, primarily we do drawings, the different type of drawings that we do. Uh, we have like the sketches, we have other drawings that are more finished and we have like, the, of course, the plans, you know, like the floor plans, elevation sections. And then there's other, other uh, that are also sketches, but are different uh, in nature. So the one on the top you see is like a more, uh, it's a quicker rendition is, uh, is for different purposes, is uh, just to uh, have like a, some test, some idea, is not meant to be uh, finished. It's intended to be uh, quick and uh, it's not very detailed per se. And, um, and we use that architects, the design team that's intended for that, uh, who is going to be using uh, those sketches are the, the architect, the design team. Um, then the one at the bottom, uh, those are the, um, oh. sorry, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. One at the bottom is uh, the, this drawing at the bottom that is uh, uh, just, just a rendering, but it shows that the, the, the finished product, the project, how the project is going to look like, look like, project, how the project is going to look like, look like. So we have the construction drawings and we have like these observation sketches. These still are fast uh, uh, elements, but are based, their intent is more observational. You are in a place uh, looking at something that exists there, that is there, and you are trying to observe and study and process all the, um, and process as much characteristics of the building as, or the object uh, as you can, as opposed to be uh, the one at the top that is uh, more, <clears throat> It's a different purpose and it's like a, a lot faster, uh, just uh, quicker. So, okay, so what is sketching is about? So, um, I, I do believe like a, 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 a it's core sketching is about, uh, is that about uh, establishing an agile communication. Uh, so we cannot be talking about the, the, if there's, there's an idea, we cannot be talking about that because it's going to be uh, just, just impossible. So sketching is like the, a perfect way to convey, to establish that communication. And uh, so it's oftentimes we have like the, uh, we do sketches and this is a little bit uh, cynical, uh, cynical representation. It's, it's, it's the same guys here just rotated. And, but that's how sometimes feels in our practice. Like we have like so many things that are, that look very similar, but in the end, uh, so we do uh, look similar, but we are learning more and more. And, and uh, oftentimes it feels and looks like, the, oh, we're doing the same thing over and over. But uh, th there is something to be learned in, um, in each one of those iterations. And that is uh, help in the process. But it's, oftentimes it just looks just like this. So and, and sketching in this sense, uh, it's not about nice, it's not about nice drawings. It's like, there's people that feel like, oh, I don't have a skills. It's like, a, we, we, it's, it's not about uh, skills, it's about like the confidence about just communicating uh, these ideas. Of course, there is practice involved and those type of things and techniques. And uh, that uh, the important thing in, in this, in the architectural sketch is the, is the, is the, the, the idea. Um, if you can remember this, this is sketch, we'll, we'll talk about that, uh, 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 down the road. So, okay, so here's part of history. Uh, as you know that, uh, so architects, um, um, architecture that, uh, has not always been as, as we think of architecture. Um, uh, 
So there is, uh, at, the, at the very beginning, you know, like the, there is like the construction was happening just in a very intuitive way. There, wasn't, there were no drawings. Then during the Roman, during the ancient times, Romans, Greeks, and other uh, ancient cultures, um, they did have that knowledge to develop uh, drawings uh, and, and uh, construction drawings. For some reason, uh, I, I really don't know, don't know they, they didn't use those in a way as we uh, use them, as we, they did, um, they opted, they use a, a mock-up, they build mock-ups, they, they build templates, and uh, they they wrote very very long descriptions uh, about uh, buildings, but no drawings uh, as we think of them. So um, that uh, they did have uh, planes. There there are existing. There's like a, some the oldest. Uh, for example, this uh, this is sculpture here. The guy. This is the uh, about oh this uh, the ruler of uh, Gudea. So he has a floor plan in his lap uh, uh, there, but um, it's, it's believed like that is the description of a building that was already built when this statue was done. So, um, so yeah, they did, so which I guess the, the, this plan proves that like they were aware of the concepts, but for some reason they didn't use it in a way as we think of um, uh, drawings or not develop, they use a different, different method. Um, then time keep passes, like that just uh, technologies, uh, construction technologies evolve, and then suddenly we're in the Middle Ages, Middle Ages, and then we have uh, towards the uh, late period of the Middle Ages, a uh, few things happening that affect the, the drawing and how that the drawing affects the, the, uh, the output, the architectural output, and how that impacted the sketching drawings, impacted the development of architecture. Uh, so, uh, one of the first thing is that uh, the the cure there. So, the the role of the, the the architect used to be up to that point. An architect used to be a uh, he was a builder as well, but buildings uh, got um, to a point that they were very, they were very complex. That it was not possible to for uh, the architect to keep tabs on everything. So. Um, they felt like that they realized that the need to have like some this pre uh planning that to do some planning aka designing just to plan ahead that that to, to have like a to know before construction starts what is what they're going to be built and that creation of a role uh, and that was that role was of that the architect as a designer as like a fancy as we think of uh, uh, nowadays. So like the guy there, like that with his uh, sunglasses, his boat and everything, he agrees, he agrees with that. And that's when, when that uh, Porsche, that figure uh, uh, kind of started. Um, and, and, but that also posed a question of, uh, 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 so how was this new role uh, architect, uh, designer, how was he going to communicate his amazing ideas to that builders and so that's where uh drawings uh came uh, handy and that's when the 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 it was agreed that that's when drawings started to become part of this process uh about incorporating drawings as part of the process to to uh design and build a building um that was the, the other thing that, that happened at the time during the late um, uh, Middle Ages uh, is like a paper, introduction to paper. Uh, at, up to this point, uh, drawings, like the, the drawings that were doing that uh, by these architects then, uh, or much of the drawings were done uh, uh, in uh, parchment paper, which were like a skin, animal skins, and very expensive. They were not easy to manipulate. So the introduction of paper uh, allow a much uh, cheaper uh, option and um, that that's when the and the first time that allowed the, the a guy could have the luxury to scribble thing throw a paper away or not or use it or draw again another an iteration and do and the sketch as we think of it was that when that uh, started and 
see the guy in the corner there with uh, all the many options that he was able to afford that uh, he got um, surrounded by, by uh, those papers. So, so during the Renaissance, like the, uh, so the arts were flourishing, were coming out from those dark times, the dark ages. Uh, so we are embracing many things, styles, and uh, so, and that was seen by architects. They, they uh, incorporated like a, a different uh, paintings and uh, techniques that were being uh, developed in painting in other art fields and incorporated that and, um, and it started to use that as a means of representation, uh, representing their, their architecture, their designs. And that uh, helped to, to, um, to evolve that, that language uh, that was done in architecture. And, and, and then through that, that another really important uh, uh, thing that happened, it was like a tracing paper was introduced. And what that did is that allowed to overlay drawings of four plans with elevations and in a way that they were, uh, that things were, could be coordinated. And, uh, you know, the floor plan was coordinated with the elevation because before they didn't have that option. So they tried to do, to do that, but they couldn't. So that tracing paper out the, the, this, this uh, coordination. So now we have the combination of uh, skeleton, like the guy could, people architects could be doing more, uh, could be sketching at a much more efficient price, more economically. Uh, they had the paper available and then have like a piece tracing paper. So they could have like, they have the ability to sketch and they have the ability to coordinate whatever they were designing. And, and those things combined allowed and uh, started like that, the, an incredible development of, uh, that was reflected in, a, in that very precise, like architecture, like a, with uh, drawings with dimensions, that people with the sketches, the designers, they had the time to study ideas, develop them, and then be out uh, the tracing paper. They were able to create final documents, construction that were very accurate. And um, then there was a more, there was a more direct, uh, um, what was built, is what the architect was expecting. Is like, I you know, like before, it, oh, oh, my, my design didn't say that. It's like, I was, that's different. That's not what I intended or, or those type of things. And uh, so that when, that, that's when all that started. And then we keep going, move forward. And then there's the, the modern, the modern architecture arrives, uh, uh, revolutions, industrial revolutions. And then the other thing like that, that occurred that was critical in this process that, that kind of got, uh, you know, is the, the, the digital era. So computers that sketch the first computers, uh, it had the, uh, first people were saying, oh yeah, whatever, if you these guys, how uh, complicated it was. Uh, they were able to, um, uh, they still were gaining some popularity and no long after, uh, so there was a particular piece, there was, uh, this is a, a software that was designed for the aviation industry that was adopted by uh, some architects. They were started to do, use uh, the computers to develop like a really very complex uh, uh, architecture and not just 2D, but 3D. And, more and more there was a feeling like the sketch was being, was being like a part of an, an all time uh, thing like a, of the past and that, that was going to go away. So moving fast forward, uh, so we see like the, um, uh, what is happening right now. So right, right now in, the, in terms of the digital world, we have like the virtual reality, we have building information modeling. It's like a fancy word for very complex drawings in, in construction and the cloud. And, but what is happening too in, in architecture uh, is many people, many practices are starting to rediscover the values of uh, sketching, which I think like that, I particular, that's a place where um, uh, I, I would like to see that. I believe that sketching has like a, many things to, to offer. Okay, so now we'll be um, 
we just go through that to the work of those uh, those uh, some architects, and they are like in chronological order. So first, we'll be talking about uh, Antonio Gaudí, uh, uh, Spanish architect, a very religious person. But uh, you see here, I want to just start with uh, these sketches that uh, he did. That um, he was like that incredibly skilled uh, artist, and uh, you see like the drawings, the gold, the textures, like that. The, and he will talk about the exercises about observation and, and always uh, kept developing those skills about drawing, the correction with a hand, the, the, and that was an important tool for him as an architect because that allowed him to, to learn more about objects in a very profound way. If you see like the, uh, the goat, it's just, just an amazing uh, edge. This is, this, the amazing of the horse is a totally different, uh, uh, style, but it's still representing something that is very fluid. Uh, that somebody that that is confident and is a very strong, very clear. And then even with few lines that he was like, he's able to uh, convey uh, a lot of. Uh, he's able to convey with few lines a lot of emotions and and convey a message. This is uh, this is. Uh, now we go to see his work. So this is the Casa Batlo in, in Barcelona, Spain. And you see like the, the sketch that he did. He has like a, something that is, uh, is, is is still kind of like a fast, but one of the things that with that Gaudí is that he knew a lot about construction. So, and that is reflected in his sketches. And um, so they are fast, but it's still, they have a lot of information because uh, he, he knew well about how, uh, 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 how um, materials, how systems work, and that was represented, and a lot, and that kind of like just understanding of materials, and along with the tools and the skills that he had, uh, allow him to um, to develop the architecture that he did. You might you might be familiar with the, uh, the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, but then this is the uh, the Casa Batlo. So I want to just to put a different uh, sample of the the architecture. Le Crucier, uh, he has, yeah, he was not an architect. He was trained uh, on their arts and uh, he was going to be a watch uh, case maker. And, uh, but he decided to, uh, he decided to pursue and he had an interest uh, in architecture. And so through drawing, through a sketching, he was traveling and he was doing his sketches and uh, he was able to observe and gain a lot of feedback and get a, a, a very intimate uh, knowledge about the buildings, about materials, by spending time and sketching them. And if you see these, that uh, was a highly accomplished uh, artist. And uh, look at this, um, if you see this uh, building, the, I can even imagine like that just the, the the things that he was learning and he had the notes, the things that he was observing, what he was doing. And then also he has, uh, he has sketches of people and like a, how, how delicate these drawings are and of nature. Um, and the reason I'm talking about this is that um, pointing this out is because people, the Corbusier has been, uh, people have said, some people think like he didn't know how to draw. <laughs> and because if you look at the sketch, and in comparison to one of the, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful uh, projects that he did, uh, the uh, Ronchamp uh, project in France. And uh, you see, as an example, the sketches, like a very crude, very fast, but it's like a different, different intention there. Let's see the nodes, but this is what allowed him to do the studies for these things. And that the sensitivity he, he has say, like uh, the things of the sensitivity, the way that he was, that he learned or he gained the sensitivity about projects was through his exercise, through his sketching exercises. And if you see his projects, it's like a, there's not, not a single thing in this project that is, that is superfluous. Everything has a reason, everything feels like it had to be there. And uh, it, to me, this is one, this is my favorite building. Um, it is an incredible uh, building 
and I'm quite pleased like that when Le Corbusier talks about, uh, mentions about the role of drawing and sketching in this process is uh, quite fascinating. Go to um, somebody that, that probably you're more familiar with. Uh, and, uh, so Frank Gehrig, uh, so here we see here, here one of his sketches and what he did, it was a combination of just with the technology, with, a, with a, this is the, the software that was developed for uh, aviation. This is a project of the Guggenheim Museum Bao in, in Spain. And uh, let's just go to the next page. Uh, remember when, when I asked you to, to remember the, the, the sketch at the beginning right here? Look at the sketches, like just so few lines, very few lines, and but yet loaded with, with information. And, uh, and then the, here, here's the building, a picture of the building. But what is fascinating is that that combination of this level of a sketching with the technology, like a one was meant to work with the other, the, the really complex, super involved um, uh, rend uh, software diagrams and the renderings, that was uh, quite a um, thing that has never done before. One of the first people that was working in that particular way in, in architecture. So I wanted to start uh, jumping here, just like that. That also with that, with that, just uh, other work by other people, and and I want to be uh, showing now my work. Uh, this is um, this uh, is a group of churches. Uh, it's a work that I did uh, for the school that I attended uh, uh, in Mexico, the university. And these are churches that churches that I uh, used to be when they were built about 400 years ago. They were in a route. Uh, just economical routes that I created in zones depends where the cities are located and uh, so those routes do not exist anymore and so these buildings are abandoned and it happens that it was like a, one of the more important routes uh, so these were like a rich wealthy uh, growing uh, communities but now they are like that just abandoned in the middle of like a just uh, jungle basically and just like a very uh, small little towns with maybe uh, 200 people or so and uh so this is i would just go there and i would call this like a observational uh uh sketches and it's not like i just you you um i would be there sit down find a place and just like i just be sketching just trying to learn uh about the about the the, the building this is another one of those and all of this is masonry and, and all these elements, like the detail uh, is uh, limestone. The detail element, uh, ornamentation was uh, limestone. And this is, uh, this, uh, as, I, as I understand, this is like the very first religious uh, institution or, or uh, church that was built uh, uh, from when, from America, uh, Europeans in, 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 in the Americas is uh, it was uh, almost com completely destroyed the UN uh, uh, gave funds to the restoration and so I was uh, I was being paid to do uh, this work to sketch to sketches about this I felt like incredibly lucky uh, uh, about that this is another one uh, and just like I said, these buildings are pretty much abandoned now. And you, see, you can see here in the tower, the, the bell tower is like a one is, is gone. And these buildings are at risk of collapsing. And there is no part of our work. What we did is these sketches, there is no other registry existing. And there's no other registry of this building, of these, of these structures. This is again, uh, uh, I particularly think like this is an incredibly beautiful building. Uh, so the order that um, of religious was uh, mainly Franciscans. And so in here, these, these structures, the masses are very simple. And, but then uh, they only, they had very little detail and it was uh, for this, uh, 
ornamentation at the top of the structures and the crosses. But other than that is like a, a stucco and limestone. And it's very humble, but at the same time, that uh, very striking. And you see here the thickness of the wall. This is about like a 1.5 meters thick uh, wall. What is this, like the five feet thickness wall and all limestone masonry. And I wanted to just to jump now into the, uh, some uh, sketches, design sketches that as we have used uh, for uh, in, the, in our design process uh, when designing a project. This is a project that uh, uses uh, shipping containers for uh, some uh, storage uh, facility. And the sketch in here was a study to understand to, uh, was a study about the materiality of the containers and, and and the the unit as a as a as a container, um, we're trying to kind of adjust to when we're talking with other consultants in the project. We're just starting to use these early um, early sketches, and then after they they uh, we were developing like um, uh, final drawings and with images, plans, and uh, but uh, at the beginning we were working with. Uh, drawings of this nature during the design, early design process. And here's more. So in the left, you have like the finished uh, building. So you have like the, uh, the drawings with dimensions. And here in the, in the right, we have the, the sketches with uh, just studying rhythm, textures, materialities. So here, these were studying in the upper sketch, we were studying the, the concrete base against like a diff softer materials. There's like a translucent materials at the top and the, the rhythm in the windows. And once the once evolved, they, be they became uh, these more uh, final uh, drawings. John, Biomedical Discovery Building. So, uh, uh, and here, the, this is sketching, uh, allow me to, uh, to do uh, some, like a more, uh, the, the sketches are more technical in nature, but at the same time, that uh, that allowed the the understanding the design intent of the project and how things, how the design was, how the materials and the elements in the in the building were reflecting the designs that we try to to convey as a design team. For example, the, the transitions of these like a, a stone facade to the soffit in, in these locations and the transitions of the stone to the glass in those locations. And if we were to draw this in the computer and put all this information, it would take super long time. And with this, I was able to do uh, several, many, many iterations to study the, those transitions and conditions. This is the same building, but it has like a, some uh, is a different areas, a terrace, but there's, uh, there's a terrace for this space. And it's the same thing. And, and again, just a transition. This is a copper cladding here. Like it just allows us to, to uh, in terms of it's technical, but also brings to the discussion things that are in, in, uh, more in the aesthetic feel, if you, if, if you will, or more of the, the design language that we are going for is, is it has like technical components that yes, it has like the this how the, the pipes are going to fit there, how water is going to circulate, how the membranes for waterproofing are going to work. But then also like at this all the all the, the components that that convey the design intent, what we are trying to achieve. And here we're just studying how the transition of the of the copper happens uh, versus this uh, the the stone uh, flooring. Uh, in this location. This is a study of these, like the, a window bay, all those, those window bays uh, right there. And again, the green part uh, is a study of the, the transitions of the materials, how the copper transitions to the windows, the windows to the stone, and how the transition happens to the exterior materials transition into the interior uh, elements. 
This is a project that I did uh, in Mexico. I was just uh, out of school and these uh, renderings were used to, uh, I had meetings with a, uh, a couple of uh, uh, journalists. Um, sorry about this. I really don't know what's happening. Uh, Couple journalists and um, they wanted to they, to have their house, and uh, so I uh, so I had meetings with them. We discussed about some design ideas, and I would just develop like some uh, sketching, uh, just a mix of uh, sketching. It's still like a little more finished, but it's still like a, a sketching because we were not saying, trying to say like they were completed. It was just like a just for me to to verify, just to talk with them to see like the they were having the. Hey, this is what I heard you saying, and and luckily they liked it, and uh, they decided to move forward. And this is another sketch of the interior that the sketch allowed me to do. Like I was doing some uh, studies for lighting shadows into the master bedroom, uh, but then also uh, this was used for as a study for me. The sketch was used as a study for me, but then also used to show that to to uh, to my clients. Now I'm going to be just, uh, I'll just go through some uh, drawings I done, like uh, I'm not related to, to any particular project, but are related to my practice in terms that that is for me to keep practicing and just keep polishing my, my skill sets. And in this case, it's just like the, just the studies about textures and, and uh, just the, gra the gradients of pencils, like the guy on the left, um, uh, was suddenly, you know, proportion of the body, but then also like the, those, uh, the the uh, the shades, the different type of shades in pencil. Uh, same thing with with this uh, this other drawing in the in the right. This is a sketch uh, downtown Iowa City, the uh, building, and and I one of the things like uh, is is great. I I before doing this. I never observed like a, to this level of detail the, of the ornamentation that is there. And that's when I realized I don't have them here. There's some animals in these buildings, in the, in the carving this in, in these buildings. And I was like that, oh, I never, does, I never noticed those before. And, uh, and then also about the, the limestone, I was just trying to see how the similarities between the limestone of these buildings and the limestone that, I was, uh, that I'm used to, to uh, from Mexico. And it's very different. <laughs> uh, so Frank Gehry and Iowa City, uh, just uh, again, just an observational study. I was just trying to do like a, some uh, exercise about uh, volumetry. And I think like the building is, is really good. Uh, uh, just, uh, this is an exercise about massing uh, skills, like how the, the, the massing uh, feels in relationship to the to a scale, a human scale. Um, this is uh, an exercise, uh, it's a study about transparencies like the, uh, and the volumes. Uh, so in, the, in this instance, there is a, there is a mix of uh, color pencils, uh, sort of like a crayon, uh, kind of crayons, markers, and digital. Similar to the, to, the, to the previous one is that the uh, color pencils, uh, markers, and this study is about like, the, uh, it's about materials to, that, we, that could be used for uh, in a screening, the screen of the building for colors and materials that could be employed for that, uh, for that uh, like a shading device for this, for this building. And this study is about uh, the integration of the structure to the transparency of the building, how to, um, about integrating the structure to be like a, a, an aesthetic element or, or an expressive element of the, of the building that would allow the, the building to be elevated and then also leaving open the, the space at the, at the bottom for circulation. We're almost there. And then this guy, this is uh, an event uh, that was, uh, we were hosting, hosted an event at the 
uh, in our office for two uh, ventures. Uh, one is the Riverside Theater, and then there is this other new business, is the uh, Bowling Alley in the Chelsea Garden Tower. Uh, so what this, uh, so we didn't know, okay, we need to create like some ambience in the room for that. So we we're trying to think like, oh, well, how do we use like uh, different topics and Ta-da! A sketch and allows us to put them together, and uh, so, and so we have them available for people that attended. It was an open house, and uh, so the pe people would put the, the the pins, and they would just throw a ball at them, or they would just grab them and be looking at them, and just uh, um, just allow that allowed for engaging in conversations about the characters and about the bowling. So. And, and I see that, uh, to me, like, that was a reflection of, like, that, just uh, the, the abilities that if we were to try to describe that, do that, to, to do the same thing, but in uh, talking, describing that, there was no way we were able to do that with, with, uh, with the use of a sketching. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much uh, for... Uh, for being here again, um, I do apologize <laughs> for the, the, the technical issues, and uh, but uh, I'm excited. I'll be, I'm excited to to hear your questions. I will be talking to you soon. If you're interested about learning more about uh, sketching, I'll be more than happy to. Or to there is like a, this website, uh, urbansketchers.org. It's an excellent, just phenomenal. Uh, it's just a group of people. They are not architects. There is like a, there are all sort of like the uh, they have all sort of backgrounds. Just the work they do is just incredible. So if you have some time, please, please check that out. And uh, I'll be happy to hear your, your questions. Thank you so much.